All right, Acts chapter 11. Acts chapter 11. Can we think, you know what? Um, there is persecution going on right now, isn't there? And where is that? In America. I, I should say this very exact. Huh? No, uh, pardon? In Virginia, yeah. What's that? I want to say Charleston? Oh, no. Charlotte. Charlottesville. Charlottesville. Okay, now, uh, and, and it is a theology or a uh, uh, political doctrine. A, uh, give me another word. Is there another word for it? Uh, political doctrine. They were scrolling uh, that there were two, I believe it was Chinese. In front of, it wasn't in Berlin, it was uh, some place in Germany, and they were taking, they must have been taking selfies or pictures of each other, doing, um, the, I, I, you know, they say it's against the law in Germany to do any uh, Nazi activity. No, they didn't use that word. Uh, so, Nazi gest so gesture. That is it, the gesture. So you can't do this. Folks, I had a pastor do that to me. I did that. And, uh, and then somebody went and struck them. Somebody who was about 40. This was a scroll. I don't know how to do this. Now, were the Chinese politically in line with it, or were they just clowning around taking selfies? Trump clowning around. What would you say? I would be clowning around. I would say they were clowning around. Now, I could be, I could be dead wrong. Now, um, uh, there is persecution going on right now of uh, persecution of, uh, you could say, of white nationalists. Of, uh, let, let's call it what it is. Let's say, let's call them Nazis, persecution of Nazis. Uh, now, in this case, though, it was persecution of Christians. And okay, that's where we're going to start. Acts 11, we're going to do verses 19 through 26. Uh, for you and I, I can't ever recall being persecuted. I remember one time, no, twice, twice on visitation that I can think of, where we were accused of being Jehovah's Witnesses and somebody was in the street yelling at us. One from a house and one actually left the house, came out to the street, were yelling at us. Uh, folks, that's not persecution. What was going on in Char Charlotte's? No. My Charlottesville. Say, Charlottesville. That was, I mean, that is, I, I would call that persecution. Whether it, it doesn't matter who was being persecuted, but I mean, there was violence there. And Paul was exercising this violence against Christians. Mm -hmm. uh, when, they, uh, when the bank robber robs the, um, robs a bank, what do they do sometimes with the money? Do they do something with the money? I you talk about the robber or the no, bank? No, not the robber, the bank. Yeah, they put it. They put an explosive pack in they put it. Yeah, and they go right there. Right. Uh, another way, uh, if you want something to scatter, what would you use? A bag of flour? You could drop it from an airplane and it scatters all over. All right. So, Father, bless our our, uh, our sermon tonight that we would be able to glean something from it. Uh, Christ's name. Some of this is not going to be able to apply uh, directly to you and I. I believe we're at the end of the age. Mm -hmm. We're at Acts 11. I don't care how you twist and turn. It's the beginning of the age. And we can only preach what it says in here, but somehow we're going to make this apply or glean something out of it that you and I can learn that uh, uh, will, will help us. Now, we have all T words here tonight. There, there are a lot of T words in verses 19 through 26, and uh, and, and the, the, the uh, title tonight is the fruit of persecution. We would think that when persecution comes, uh, the idea is that the apostle uh, Paul, which before he was saved, as Saul, he wanted to squelch the church and to uh, put lights out and to end it. And so. Uh, 
uh, you've got these 500 thugs that come into uh, this town and uh, they are now being, we'll say they're being persecuted for the right reason, the wrong reason, or whatever difference does it make, but they scatter everywhere. They're going to go home, some to Ohio. I guess they traveled, some of them traveled a long way. And so they scattered everywhere. But all these people were centered in Jerusalem. And then when the persecution came and he was on the road to Damascus, these people, these people scattered everywhere as far as Antioch. Now, uh, the, 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 they went to Antioch, and I, I looked it up on the map. It's, it's anywhere from two to almost 300 miles away. That, that, that's a little bit of a distance back then. I would say, uh, if it's a couple hundred miles, we're talking further from here to Columbus. We're talking from here to uh, Cincinnati. Is that a fair? Is it about 200 miles from here to Cincinnati? 240. 240. Okay, so uh, from here to uh, Springfield? Dayton. Springfield, Dayton would be. Springfield, Dayton, about 200. Okay. It says, now they which were scattered abroad, we'll begin here in verses 19 and 20. Now they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen, traveled, all right, so here's our first T word, the traveling. This message that we have of the gospel uh, when persecution comes and the people scatter, they have this message and it's a message that has never been heard before. It's something that's new, it's something that's fresh, and people uh, people like something new. You know, they want the same old, same old, this is something new, they have never heard this. The traveling of it, when persecution comes, it can travel everywhere. It, now, uh, uh, this uh, fascism is not something new. That's been around uh, for, we'll say, not 100 years. When was fascism invented? Or that form of government, or has there been forms of that for a long, long time. Well, off and on, probably. Off and on for a while. For a while, yeah. 100, 200 years, yeah. and, and, and so on. But this is something new, and it's scattered. It's, it's scattered. The traveling, it, it, as far as Phoenice and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word not uh, to none, but unto the Jews only. And some of them were men of Cyprus and Cyrene, which when they were come to Antioch, spake unto the Grecians, preaching, preaching the Lord Jesus. So the traveling of this message. Uh, as, as, I, as I speak this, how can we get the message to travel out there into regions or realms where people have never heard it? Now listen, there's got to be people that have never heard. Uh, such as, you know, people are born every day. We got a, a new baby. We got, you know, like we got little Shane here. As, uh, along the way, mom and dad are teaching him these things, and we learn by these baby steps. But some, somewhere along the line, I never heard the gospel. Somewhere along the line, I had to hear it for the first time, even though we live in a culture that uh, is so-called uh, built upon this. Now, I'm, I'm trying to think. Now, think about this. Those of you that are here right now, how far away can the gospel go if you put your mind to it within the next four months? As far away as what? We got some people here, not in the church, but near the church, that have a, a visa, a green card, a, a whatever. That's only going to what, what's it up? Yeah, where? Who are these people? Guatemala. They can go. Where is Guatemala? Central yeah, that's in Central America, all right? So it's south of Mexico, and it's north of Venezuela, in Central America. Is it north or south of Panama? North of Panama. It's north of Panama. That's a good big distance. Mm -hmm. So uh, what are these Guatemalans? What, what faith are they? Well, let's just, let's make the educated guess. They're Roman Catholics. There is an opportunity, in, in other words, to uh, preach. Now, we have a message up there in Spanish only. We don't know who we contact and, and who we touch every day that this, this message travels a long way. Tammy was just telling me a story about those that have heard about the Tuckers in Alaska and how they heard about... I'm not interested in connections about you and I personally, but 
the connection that we want to sp uh, spread is not not your and my name, but the name of Jesus. That that's right. the, what we want to spread. Right. But the but the point is that Tammy knew people that heard about the Tucker family, and that was through the which family? Well, well, well okay, no, let's okay. We'll just get to the what. To, from the Prangers. They heard about us from the Prangers because the Prangers were up in Alaska doing, um, uh, not missionary work, they were doing um, deputation. Thank you for the work. They were doing deputation. So wherever they go, uh, you know, they're eating dinner, they have nothing to talk about, so they talk about the Tuckers or what, we, we know this family and so on. But if you, if the prangers are meeting people that they don't, that don't know Jesus, they say, well, we can tell you about Jesus. That's, that's the key here. So the, the idea is when persecution, specifically in this case, what is the fruit of persecution? You may think that there is no fruit from it, but since there is no, no, no persecution, we have to have some fruit that's going to go a long way away because of our witness. And it's going to be scattered abroad, scattered abroad. It says scattered abroad upon the persecution. Traveled as far. The traveling of it, which is one of the easiest way to make this travel today. Via the what? Internet, the phone, electronically, however that's done. And it's bounced off a satellite. Uh, it, it's bounced off of that, and, and it, it, it travels around to these uh, cell towers, and it goes over the airwaves. It also goes over wires that are strung up, up, up along the poles, and, and so on. But it does travel in various. Uh, you listen, and that's not the only way today. There are all kinds of avenues in which to do it. But we need, we need to discover, and or I should say, discover to realize that there will be fruit because of certain situations in our lives and the paths that you and, and I meet. Now, um, it says here, Jerusalem, when I look at Jerusalem, it's near the coast. Antioch is on the coast. I went and looked it up. So how would that have traveled? We had said this way because of Joppa and Caesarea. How did they travel that? I said they hooked it to 40 miles. You said what? They took a boat. All right, which is a very high possibility that they took a sh took to shipping and took to, to shipping to, to get up the Antioch. It could have gone by via a boat. It could have gone that way. The traveling of the message. So uh, you, you may think that it's it's uh, small or minuscule. You'd be a, a, a good news can go a long way, right? It can go a long way. Does bad news go a long way? The moment bad news hits, man, it goes everywhere. Right? They have, what, what do you have on that phone? It's called a uh, group texting. You know, I, now do you put people on your group or you decide who's on your group or not? So when, when Trump does it, is it people in that group? How does he get his message? Well, tweeting is a subscription service. Yeah. All right, so let's say you're on this subscription service. Is the whole world anybody who's a tweeter? Anybody? Right. It's like the plain dealer. They only drop it off at the house of the subscriber. Okay, so yeah. those that are tweeters, can, it's free, and they all tweeters are going to get this message. How many tweeters are out there today? 50 million, 100 million subscribers? Does anybody know? It depends on the person. Is it worldwide? Yes. Yeah. It is worldwide. So you can have uh, a billion people. You can elect to follow whoever you want, and whatever they tweet, you'll get a copy. Oh, of okay, then you yes. Whoever's following you, you are able to. See okay, it. no one's following me, so no one's tweeting me. But okay, you have to be a follower. But the idea you can get it out there, man, whatever it is. And you got to be careful what messages are out there. There's all kinds of anything is awful out there. The traveling of this, it travels a long way. Now we have to remember. First century Christians here, they did not know, they did not hear. hear. I mean, these people, the world had yet to hear. So it's, again, it's the first fruits, the best fruits, the ripest fruit. It's not that it's the sweetest fruit, right? If you get fruit, let's say you're picking strawberries. I mean, the strawberry crop from down in Amish country was awful. The strawberries were bitter. I mean, you might have better strawberries, you should go to stop and shop. And just buying there, the big ones that are so called from California, they were better, much better than 
what was coming out of Amish land. It was, it was awful. The year was, it was a bad, was it a bad year, girls, for strawberry? It, was, it, was, it wasn't the best year. So the very first time that people hear the gospel, it's, and, and people are getting saved off of that, it is the first fruits. It is the best tasting. It's not like fruit that's been laying around where it's getting low. You know, it's the best fruit in it. And people, people are, are after that. People are after it. The traveling. So this, these people were persecuted. You know, uh, all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall what? Suffer persecution. And so the persecution is dispersed. You and I are not traveling people. We're not... We, are, as Americans, are not being persecuted. Not to say that this couldn't happen in the future, but I, the only traveling I intend to do is the rapture now. Either I travel across the street or I'm going to travel uh, through the rapture. Uh, you know, I'm only going to travel 100 or 200 feet across the road or a, a few million light years away in, into heaven. Right, that kind of traveling. But the traveling uh, that, it, that results from persecution can go a long way. Now, obviously I said that there isn't, that we're not, no one's persecuting Guatemalans, right? They're glad that Guatemalans are here. But to say that, that, that they can't have some baggage in their bag, a, a gospel track that gets in their heart, somebody could say, and they take that home with them. Who, who's, who's, to, who's to say that that can't happen? The traveling, it can go a long way. Verse 21. Our next T word. Is there a T word in that? Verse 21. Huh? And the hand of the Lord was with him, and a great number believed. And what? And turned in the Lord. Oh, folks, it's, I preached a message called Turning on a What? Anybody remember? Turning on a Dime. All right, Paul turned, and he, he got saved on the road to Damascus, and his life turned on a dime. You know, the Bible outlines itself, right? It, you know, it's it's kind of easy to find these T words, you know, the traveling, the turning. People will and do turn to the Lord. Um, there are, you know, I, I am not hooked on op opioids. Uh, we have one up there, uh, hooked on opioids, that's pretty big. And then we have uh, Jesus Christ, uh, uh, his son, uh, cleanses us from all sin. Uh, it's it's uh, 1 John 1, 7 is the verse. Now, uh, we have another one being uh, about being hooked or addicted, addicted to opioids. I think they get addicted to Jesus. They addicted themselves to the ministry. That is a verse. That only, by the way, it only appears one time in the Bible. But people do turn. I would assume if you're on this open, that is a tough one. I don't know. Is that a painkiller? What is that? It's a painkiller. It's a prescription <coughs> painkiller. Prescription painkiller. People get hooked on these. People are hooked on all kinds of different things. Mm -hmm. They're hooked on, you know, sports. They're hooked on this. And that. I mean, this is some kind of a chemical uh, dependency. And people who uh, do need to, and people can turn. The hand of the Lord was with them, with these people that traveled far, bringing the gospel, and a great number believed. It, it was a lot, a lot, and turned to the Lord. There was fruit from this persecution, that wherever they went, <clears throat> they went preaching. Now just imagine if you had to pull up stakes, you're uh, persecuted. Are you ready to go at a moment's notice? Who here's ready to go at a moment's notice? If, uh, well, I have to go get my pack, my bag. You know, if they told you to clear out, you're clearing out now. Not later. And they got a gun. You're, uh, you're, you're clearing out now. Well, let me go, boom. That's it. And what, what does the rest of the household do? Well, either, well, I volunteer to die, or you're, you're packing it in the bus. You get in there now. You know, we're not waiting. When they when they had to uh, pull up stakes and move out, they had to move out in a hurry. And they left everything behind. Just imagine uh, what happened. But their testimony brought about and their, their, their preaching of Jesus turned people unto the Lord. Turned unto the Lord. In other words, he is our only hope. 
only hope. Look at verse 22. Our next T word. Then tidings of these things came into the ears of the church which was in Jerusalem. The tidings. Now, they're already, they're 200 miles away. With, this could have happened overnight. I mean, today you can tweet this and this goes within seconds back and forth. I don't know how long it took them to get the 200 miles there. And then after after this these things happened, that people turned to the Lord, and then uh, they probably said, well, you know, I, I, I can go home. I, I'm kind of done getting persecuted. Maybe I can go get my stuff, or I can tell my aunt and uncle what happened. And the tidings of what took place, maybe it was a month, maybe it was two months, however long it took. But the tidings of though that good news eventually made it back to those that were in Jerusalem. Now, if, it, if that, those tidings could come back then, those, the same tidings can come back today. You know, you, you hear of good news uh, from a long ways out. The tidings of that, uh, uh, not hearsay, but, but factual things. I, I, I can't think of any per personal example of that myself off the top of my head where tidings would come would come through that, that would come back. You know, I can only think of what you you heard this week that people heard of us in uh, uh, Alaska, and that's got to be twenty some years ago, right? That's a long time ago. And finally, the tidings came back twenty years later. Not too much. What about the results from Walmart? What about? Uh, now we didn't get any from this last one. The longest one was uh, a, uh, a gospel track was in a field someplace. A hunter, I assume it was a hunter. They're out there hunting. They find it. It's been there a while. You know, it was sent up in the summer. It could have been there for three or four months out there, or a year and three or four months. And, and eventually that one had come back. We haven't gotten any back. We haven't even got those back lately. Tidings coming back. We do have uh, tidings from a far country, though, right here, don't we? <laughs> In the Bible. The tidings. The tidings. Now, the last part of this in verse 22. And they sent forth Barnabas that he should go as far as Antioch. Okay? So who do you... Who do you they decided, because of what they heard, they decided to send somebody up there. So our next T word, you send somebody that you what? Trust. Yes, ma'am. The trust. So Barnabas is, uh, is generally viewed as an older man. Uh, he's not 70 years old, but he's not 30 years old. We would like liken him under 40 or between 40 and 50 years old. And they trusted him. Somebody who is entrusted to... Uh, to make it to the destination, not to get distracted all along the way, to encourage the saints. Uh, I believe he's in going to encourage the saints that are up there in Antioch, and they decide to, to send somebody that they trust. Folks, uh, it does talk about that. Somebody that is not trusted, and you, you put something that uh, is important in a person that you can't trust, it's like a, a, a foot out of joint or a or a, a toothache, I think. A broken tooth and a foot out of joint. I'm pretty sure it's a problem, right? Because they get derailed along the way and, and they, they, you know, we're to deliver the couch. You get halfway there and they say, well, I don't even want to deliver this thing. You stop the truck and you throw it in the gulch. You, you throw it in the first ditch you find. There are people that are like that, folks. There are people that are like that. They, and the project is never fulfilled. So Barnabas is entrusted that he is going to get up there, right? It's, it, it's kind of like the, uh, the story of the, 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 uh, the Dutch boy in the dam, right? What does he do with his finger? He sticks it in the lake. He's, and and is, he going, is he going to leave his post? He's not going to leave his post, right? So Barnabas is that type of a person. 
Now we know he's a, yeah, there's a, a few, we've done sermons on, on Barnabas before. He's a kind person, he's a thoughtful person, he's all, all kinds of, uh, I can't think of anything negative about Barnabas. He is a trusted individual. He's set out on this journey. Uh, I would still say 200 miles back then, that's a long way away back then. Now today we may not may not think of that uh, being a long way away, but uh, people who would be trusted to do that. I, I try to think about the, the longest, I think one time uh, I had gotten a phone call. I got a phone call and I was told uh, uh, the situation, this is, uh, this has got to be uh, maybe not quite 15 years ago, not quite. I'd gotten a phone call and I uh, said, I, I need help, I need help. I was at work, I, I have the, I have the uh, opportunity or the flexibility to do this. The call had come in, I had to go, I think it was to Kentucky. It could have been to Cincinnati, but it was in that, re I think it was in that region, five or six hours away. I was on the road I was, I, I made two phone calls. I was in my car in less than five minutes from work, locked up, the, you know, it took me that long to make two phone calls. I called one person, I said, get ready, I'm there now. Called another person that was uh, a few hundred feet away and I said, get ready, I'm leaving. I closed up that shop, I picked up one person within moments. Picked up the other person in 10 minutes, we were on our way. And I think I was within a window of, uh, I, I've had another situation where I was within a window of one minute of being either too, too late. That was a five or six or an eight hour ride. This other one was about a, a 45 minute ride. I was within that just seconds, seconds of being less than a minute on one of them being too late. Somebody who is entrusted in Barnabas I'm not saying Barnabas had to leave that quick. But, and he packed his bag, he made the journey, he, he, ma he made it up there and did what he was supposed to do. A person that is trusted. Look at verses 23 and 24. Who when he came, now, now listen, can we, you say, well, we're not being persecuted. Well, listen, there's all kinds of things that we can learn from this. You can be a Barnabas, a person who can be trusted to fulfill the role that was assigned to you. Somebody that was uh, given this honor to go, who when he came and had seen the grace of God was glad and exhorted them all that with purpose of heart they would cleave unto the Lord. For he was a good man, full of the Holy Ghost and of faith, and much people was added, added unto the Lord. Now, there is no T word in there, but the trust was given him and then it's important as to what what Barnabas said. So what, what was important about it said? What what what's the T word for what said? The what? The tongue. See how important your tongue is. <coughs> and now we don't have to have persecution to prove whether or not your tongue is good or bad, do we? We can learn that now. He was encouraging. He was. He was entrusted, he, he, his tongue did more work and got more work done with his tongue than he ever got done with his hands, right? Right? He encouraged, uh, he saw the grace, he exhorted them that with purpose of heart that they would cleave unto the Lord. They, they were, uh, they probably needed encouragement. He was sent up there and he was the great encourager for people to go on. You know, you're, you're, uh, you know, in the movie, uh, in the movie Moby Dick, there's two boats that go out. If you re remember, they're rowing and they're rowing after. Uh, I think they are rowing after Moby Dick himself at this time. And do you re recall? There's two. Uh, I don't know what you call the guy that actually is the uh, uh, the uh, foreman of the boat. What would you call that? First mate. The, uh, the skipper? Let's call him the skipper. Not the first mate of the, 
of the uh, ship. What was the name of the ship? What do you think of it? There was a name for the ship, I'm sure of it. But let's call him the skipper of the, of the skiff. There's a skipper, and, and he, the one is, ah, put your backs into it, lads! You know, let's row hot and put your backs into it. Remember that? And the other one, it, 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 remember what the other one? Ah, easy, lads. Pull, pull, just keep pulling. One, one is, uh, it, you know, they, they show the contrast between the two skippers. One is, uh, is uh, uh, driving with a whip. The other is softly encouraging to keep pulling it. You're doing good, lads. Right? Remember that? If we ever see the movie. But there's the two different... Uh, you can picture... If you never saw the movie, you can picture it, can't you? You can picture that. The one is a driver, and the other is a... Uh, is a uh, uh, come on. Come on. You can make it. You can make it. Isn't that what you do with a baby? When they take their first step, come on, I know you can make it. You know, they stand up and they take, I know you can do it, you can come on, baby. Right? And they take their first steps, right? And you, and you help them along. So much, you need to learn from this. Without persecution, there's so much we can learn. A person is trusted and the accomplishment that can be made with the tongue is so important. No, not tonight. No, that's okay. Hey, I'm going to answer your question. Go ahead. What's the question? One's a driver, one's a leader. One's a, yeah, you know what? And we are sheep. Are sheep driven or led? Led. led. Sheep are to be led, not driven. This is not a what drive. It's not a cattle drive. All right? And preachers do have different methods or different characters about men that do things in, in different ways, right? And we need to learn to be a leader. A leader is, a, we need to lead and not drive. So much can be accomplished with the tongue. Take that to heart. I mean, take it to heart and work at it. Work at it until it becomes perfected. We need to perfect that tongue. <clears throat> All right, and no matter what the wife has cooked for me lately, I say, wow. And, and she might laugh at me and say, wow, you're pretty sarcastic about it. But wow, that was the most delicious dish I have ever eaten. That was just wonderful. This, you know, she makes me toast in the morning. I don't say anything negative, even though the smoke alarm went off. <laughs> This is the best toast I've ever had. And you know what? She makes the coffee just the way I like it. She really does. She, she never makes it the way I don't like it. She makes it real weak. That's how I like it. She, makes it, <laughs> she never makes it strong. Uh, she never anymore. In fact, she actually has been making it uh, more weak than I'd rather have it. I mean, she's making it extra weak. A lot could be accomplished with the tongue, folks. The tongue. The tongue. Verse 25. Then departed Barnabas to Tarsus, that's not our T word, for to seek Saul. How many guys do you see there? Yes, yeah, say it out loud, sister. That's our next one. The two. The two of us. Da 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 da. The two of us. Da 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 da. Who sings that? Da 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 da. Other than me. <laughs> Done by several, but that I first come to mind, I think, is Stephen Eady. Oh, Stephen Eady. Yeah, Eady Gourmet. There's the two of us, and I'll be traveling on, something like that. I'll say it again. The two of us. There's always seems to be two in the Bible that just, now, now we know we, we know they had a falling out. We know they had that. But until that time, they just gelled. They probably, I'd like to think that even after they're falling out years later, they still got together, right? There's the two of, the two of you, right? Who here have you known the longest in this church right now? You're sitting here. Yeah, the, the two of you, <laughs> right? Da, 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 da. There's the two of you, right? Who here have I known longer than anybody? Uh, uh, 
it isn't my wife, it, it's Dana. You know, unfortunately, it's Dana. The two of us, right? It's the two of us. See, if you're married, uh, that, that should override all of those. But if you're married, that should override all over, and it should be the two of you. Amen? The two of us. Right? Uh, now, I don't know if the wife wanted to go down in the hole over there. We went down there on Monday to the uh, falls to that viaduct, and we walked down there and said, well, if we walk down in there, we have to walk back up. We, we walked up, it went pretty well. And the humidity was low. We got to that creek. I was sweating bullets, not from being nervous, but the, uh, 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 the uh, uh, tr tribulation, not the, uh, the churning of the water created a humidity down there. I was sweating like crazy down there. I don't know why. But by the time we got up the top, usually it'd be cooler at the river. By the time I got the top, I, I actually cooled off. It was uh, much less humid. But it was the two of us, you know, the two of us. And here it is in witnessing. It, they went out together, uh, then departed Barnabas uh, to Tarsus for to seek Saul. The two of us. There's fruit in this. He goes up there. He is. Uh, he, he performs what he's been entrusted to do. He does the encouraging with a tongue. And oh, by the way, while he was up there, he and me is go find my buddy. I heard he was up this way. I'll look them up, the two of them, the two of them. Verse 26, and when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church. It was a whole year. Give me a good T word for that, for a whole year. Huh? The amount of what? The time. Listen, good things happen but not necessarily overnight. Not necessarily overnight. Rome, as the saying goes, and Hank Snow sings a song about it, Rome wasn't built, what? In a day. It does take time. So all, now, you see these things that we can glean from this, even though even though the United States government isn't stepping in here, or Rome and, and the Pope is stepping in here and shutting us down, we're not being persecuted, is that if there's good things that are going to happen, it takes time. It takes time. If you want to do a good job, it takes time. I, now, I built those two cabinets out of a, the last bit of a, of a certain pile. I wanted every last scrap out of that one tree. I didn't want to mix trees. It stained weird. The wood was weird. It looked weird. I think that tree came out of a house about uh, uh, eight houses away from the new post office. It was a big oak. Ben said, they're taking a big oak down there. He got it for me back here. It's been cut up for years up there. And I said, I I'll build those two cabinets out of that. Folks, I, I could have taken shortcuts. I could have did this. I could have did that. I said, no, you know what? I'm just going to do it right. I'm going to just <clears throat> when I have time, I'm going to saw the wood. I'm going to mill the wood. We're going to we're going to take our time. And I, I I drew a little sketch, drew a little sketch. I think I want it to look like this. And I, you take your time. If you want it right, it's going to take time. Take time. Amen. The time that it takes. And so they assembled themselves for a whole year. And what's our next one? in there and taught much people the t all right but it's not that tense the teaching the teaching systematic systematic uh, line upon line here a little there a little plodding along you know layer after layer of teaching layer after layer of teaching we got up through a uh, cory did come to the house on tuesday and I taught her, the last lesson was, um, uh, I can't even remember. It was number 17, I can't think what it is. Maybe it's communion. I can't remember now. Maybe that's what it is, communion, we, we taught on that. And, and from 17, 18, 19, 20, those last four books, 
are kind of incomplete books. They were never really finished up uh, from the, um, who, who wrote those books? Uh, yeah, from Bob, Bob? Bob Mack. And he was up in New York when he did those. At least that's what I understand. But the a systematic teaching, listen, Corey can't read English. She can speak English. She took it for six months. And where, would, where could she practice in Peru? Anybody know? I'll tell you where. Nowhere. Because everybody in Peru speaks what? Spanish. So there was no one to practice on. So she's only had six months in lessons of English in Peru. And the rest has been on her own and wherever she can find somebody English to speak to. I mean, we, we go over words, the definition of words, the pronounce. I mean, she, she, we get to words that you and I now are accustomed to, and you weren't accustomed to before you got in the King James Bible. Notwithstanding, uh, words like that, nevertheless, nevertheless, notwithstanding, there's a slew of those words where I have to sit there and I have to think, yeah, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? So if I have to think of, we know what it means, nevertheless, oh, well, even though, even though this is it, this is this. Even though this, nevertheless, this. But to explain that, that that's tough. And if you don't know or speak the language, uh, she has the Spanish next to it, so she reads that, oh, I, it means, and she, she tries to interpret it from reading uh, her Spanish. That's when we decided this last week, we decided let's just put a whole billboard up there in Spanish, the whole thing. And, and yeah, there's nothing English on it, nothing at all in English on the one billboard. So it's all in Spanish. And to say that won't minister to somebody, uh, it, it, it's going to. I, I, the very first word said, attention. So uh, the two Guatemalans were out here and I said, attention, attention. And, and I got their attention, and I showed it to him. He, Nathan blew it up on eight and a half by eleven, and they go, and they go, and then, then they walked over, yeah, and then they, oh, and then they went, oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, they they didn't say CC, but they, I, I said, any mistakes? I, I, I don't know what I said. Uh, el, any el mistakeios on it? You know. And uh, they said, no, 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 no mistakes. At least, I don't know if they understood me, but, uh, but they liked it. They liked it, and, and, uh, and, and they read it, right? It, it, the teaching, line upon line, you know? And, and that's how it's done. And it, and it takes time and taught much people. Our last word tonight. The reason I went here, I said, there's got to be a sermon here because of this. Anybody here have a nickname? My nickname is Mickey. That is my nickname. I have a, a friend that calls, he still calls me, that. he calls me Mick. Anybody know why I'm called Mickey? Nope, not Mickey Rooney. No. No, Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse. Why was I named Gary? Gary Cooper. I know I've told you these, these dumb stories. Anybody here? Uh, we called Bus, Buster, because my uncle was Uncle Bus uh, was called, I just named him after my uncle, Buster. Buster. Anybody here have a nickname that you, you're not afraid to tell? <laughs> yes, yes. Well, sir. my given name is John, and there were so many Johns in the family. There you go. And it's a name with respect. And everybody else. And, and it, it's not a clown John around. Jack. Jay. Yeah, it's not. A, a, do you have one? Yeah, Muscle. Sam. Muscle? Sam? Muscle Sam. I won't, I will never call you that. All right, now, I, uh, I corrected, I, I tried to correct, uh, I did it publicly. Maybe I shouldn't have done it publicly, but uh, 
oh, your, your nephew, your Tyler, for calling Dad Dan. It, when he said Dan, I, 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 did he say Dan or did he say Dad? But Mom said he said Dan. I can't, my, my father's name is Chester. I can't imagine saying in church, pray for Chester. <laughs> I just can't imagine doing that. It, it's my father, so out of respect, you, you, you would always say, uh, pray for my, my father and my, my dad. This is not a silly word. It's not a, uh, a, a derogatory term. It's that, it says in that verse, the last verse, they were first called what? Christians at Antioch. So our last T word is, they're what? The. Oh, that would have been a good one. That, but that's not what I picked. Their testimony, or the testimony. The testimony that was given to these, that, that they had, because of the persecution, where it went, and the, the, the turning of their lives, when people turn, that they're not the same person anymore. They act differently. They look different. They talk differently. Even though they're similar, but something's, something's different. What happened here? They, were, they then called them Christian. And I would assume it's not a derogatory term. It's a good term that was, that was given them. The testimony. So out of their nine points, the fruit of persecution, even though you and I are not being persecuted, that we know openly, who's persecuting us right now as we speak? Doing, doing his best. The devil is. Any way he can. But through this, we ought to be able to glean out at least a half of, half of these points and apply that to our life and wherever we're weak, weak in the faith, and, and weak at certain things, it, it, wherever we're weak at it, work at it to enhance wherever we are weak so that we would be a better Christian shake hands before we leave.